Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys the basics to setting up unit testing inside of the Unity engine. So in this example, we're going to be unit testing this incredibly simple class. So we're just going to be testing uh, this method over here where it multiplies a integer value by 5 if it is positive. If it's less than 0, then it will throw an exception, bad value. This should probably be something like a number format exception, but you know, whatever. But then otherwise, if the number is zero or positive, it will return the input value multiplied by five. So something really simple that we can easily test. So these days for unit testing inside of Unity, um, they tend to create what are called assembly definition files or .asmdef files. And what those assembly definition files do is organize the different uh, files in your project, usually scripts, and have them compile individually as uh, separate projects. So it's kind of like in Unity where you have like a bunch of different solutions. Uh, the assembly definition file allows you to customize what those solutions are so that if you let's say build one of those solutions like the testing solution, then it will only build the scripts and the dependencies that are required to do those tests rather than compiling every single file in your project, which helps if you have a larger project. But the thing is, once you start using them, you kind of need to do it for all the assets in your file. And the reason it's important to know this is that once you start adding unit tests, if you do it at least the out of the box way, it's going to create an assembly definition file for your testing folder. Um, but that requires you to have an assembly definition for all of the scripts that or that test is going to depend on so you can actually import and use them. So if we go up to window here and go down to general and test runner, we're going to get this pop up where we can create an edit mode test assembly folder. There's also play mode for doing uh, scene based tests when you actually need to load up a scene and test things with that loaded scene. Um, but for just doing unit tests, you would do edit mode tests because you don't want the extra overhead of loading the scene. So here I'm going to hit create edit mode test assembly folder and we can just leave the uh, name of it defaulting to tests. So if we open up that folder, you'll see now that there is a assembly definition uh, file in here, which and this assembly definition file can set other assembly definition files, which this one depends on. So if we want to test a script that we wrote for our Unity game, we'll want that included in this references section here. You can also uh, set which platforms that this should be built for. So if you have, let's say, assembly definition um, nested in your project for only Android specific scripts, you could check Androids and leave everything else blank so that it will only ever build those if you're trying to build your game for Android because it's only relevant then. Um, OK, so now we're going to want a test script. So down here where it says assets tests, I'm going to hit create test script in the current folder. Uh, over here, I guess in the project, it's loading up there. We can just call it um, unit tests one. I don't know. Uh, you can probably think of a better name than that. But that should be located inside of this tests folder. So unless we have another nested assembly definition file somewhere in this folder and nested down in many subdirectories, then everything inside of here is going to be built with the tests assembly file. So now in our assets uh, folder, and generally I would move um, our game scripts into its own scripts folder. So maybe we should just do that. So I'll create one called scripts here. And I'll put that in here. And because the tests are technically their own scripts, I'll also move the tests folder into scripts slash tests. Um, now we're going to need an assembly definition file to reference this number machine. So I'm going to right click and go to assembly definition file and I will call this game scripts. So this will include number machine in this assembly definition build but it will not include unit test one because unit test one is going to be managed by the tests assembly definition. So basically anything in here gets excluded from the game scripts assembly definition file. So now what we need to do is add game scripts as a dependency for tests. So over here in the inspector, 
we want to add a assembly definition reference and that is going to be referencing game scripts. So by doing this, we can use any classes that are included in the game scripts build inside of our unit tests. So that's really important there. Make sure you do that. So now over in the Visual Studio or whatever your editor is, we can see now that the solution has two projects that have been custom defined by those assembly definition files. We have game scripts and we have tests. So these overwrite the default uh, projects that Unity comes with out of the box. And if we open these up, we can see that the scripts we would expect to show up there are in fact in there. So let's open up unit test one here. And now we can start setting some tests. So we're not going to need this because we're not doing any coroutines. And now we can define what our tests are. So if you didn't already know, uh, it uses the in unit framework. So if you want to create a test, you should uh, give it the test attribute. And inside of in unit, you can define a method as setup, which means it will be run every time before you run a test. So we could say create a setup game object method here. And then we'll have a variable up here. So this will be the number machine variable. And I will call it machine. You can see that it immediately recognizes the class because uh, the tests project depends on the game scripts project. So it already has the references to that project, which is what we would expect. So now we want to initialize this as a new uh, number machine. And then we can also have a teardown. So the teardown method is going to be destroy game object. You can actually call it whatever you want. It's the attribute that matters, not the name. So machine equals null. Why not? So there'll be a completely new number machine every time we run any of the tests in this uh, project. So let's actually create some tests. Um, the first test will be a negative number returns exception. So to do that, uh, we're basically going to run the method on the machine object. And then we're going to check with an assert that it throws an exception. And I think we can just do it like this. So machine dot multiply by five and we see what comes out of that. So this should return an int and I haven't put an int in. So we can actually declare what that value will be up here. Negative number equals negative one. Why not? So let's pass that in and we will import system so that we know what the exception class is and let me see here uh, okay we actually need to declare this as a delegate so we can do that just by adding this in i think that's all we need really so this should throw an exception and we would expect that because in the validation for this method if it's less than zero then it throws an exception of bad value um okay so let's write another test so let's see test public void unit test one becomes five why not so for this assertion we just want to check that the value is going to be equal to five so we can do an assert uh, r equal and we expect i guess five as an integer or we could just put five there i think i think that will work either way and then we want to check the method so multiply object by five and we're multiplying one so this should return successful if it in fact becomes equal to five so let's test a really big number now um, going to the outer bounds to see if anything weird happens so unit test um, let's say 100,000 becomes 500,000 so one two three four five Five, uh, five zeros? Yep. And we will assert that. Our equal. Okay, so 500,000. One, two, three, four, five. And then machine multiply the value. 100,000. So one, two, three, four, five zeros. And that's pretty much it. So we've written three unit tests now. And we want to go ahead and test them. Well, all we need to do now is go back over to our game project. 
And uh, now we can go up to Window General Test Runner. And as long as we're looking at the folder over here, we should see uh, the script show up here, the script for the unit test. And we can see it's nested inside of the test project, which is part of our basic unit test solution slash game. Um, so we come down here and we can see the unit test one class, which has three tests. We can right click on these and run them individually. Or if we want to run them all at once, we can right click over here on the on the class name and just hit run. And then we can see that all three of these unit tests are in fact working. Um, you can also run every test in your project if you have multiple files by just going up here to the top hitting run or you can hit run all up there at the top left. Now let's make one that intentionally fails just to show that these tests are in fact working. Um, so let's see. Uh, one becomes seven. Okay, so obviously in a method that multiplies by five, this should not work. So uh, let's check. R equal seven machine dot multiply by five. And we're multiplying the number one. So we save that. We're going to wait for it to compile and show up here again. And there it is. So let's just run all the tests one more time. And oh, look at that. We expected seven, but was five. And what's so great about unit tests is that you can test for a lot of different things without having to run your game. Uh, you can automate them uh, with a testing server. And uh, j just if you do it manually, it's really, really quick to check for a lot of different things. And if you set up unit tests um, as you're building your game and maybe you change a lot of stuff around, you can always come into these tests and make sure that they all still succeed uh, so that you will know if a change you made later on breaks something that was already working. So uh, that's a really basic introduction to unit testing in Unity. I've been Chris. I hope this tutorial helped you guys out and I will see you guys in my future Unity content.